Good morning, everybody. I just want to start your day off positively by saying fuck all the haters. Go fuck yourselves. Dig a hole and die, bitch. All my peeps, platinum peoples, salute to you, motherfuckers. Have a great day. Chris Cyborg, Amanda Nunez, it shall be done. Nunez asked for some extra time to put on some weight for what is absolutely a super fight between champions here. Asking you shall receive. So Amanda Nunez engaged to Nina Ansaroff, and she has a date with Chris Cyborg before the year is out. Your thoughts on the UFC featherweight championship fight coming up at 232. Uh, history in the making, this is the first female super fight in the UFC. Um, it, it, it is amazing. Listen, these are the only two ladies that can beat each other, in my opinion. You look at skill-wise, the experience that they have. Um, I, I don't know if there's anyone out there who could beat Amanda Nunes, and I don't think there's anyone out there who could beat Cyborg. Um, these two ladies can get it done. Uh, they have tremendous firepower. Um, they're strong for their divisions. They're big for their divisions. Uh, both uh, good on the ground. This is a fight that had to happen. They've been talking about it now for the last couple of years. Uh, they both finally signed it, uh, signed on the dotted line, and uh, I'm happy that they did, man. This is a tremendous fight. And again, these are women who, who know how to deliver action. They've become a little bit more patient the last couple of years. Uh, they would you know, typically take out their opposition with uh, tremendous ferocity, but they become more patient. They, they know how to uh, let their hands go and when to let their hands go. Uh, and when they do, they, they will most likely take you out. Um, this is a very interesting fight, and I think it's a little bit more difficult to call than, than people realize. Right, and I think the betting line will dovetail with that assessment. And, and it isn't Cyborg versus Rousey, but I think for a lot of mixed martial arts fans, this is the most excited they will ever be yeah. uh, for a women's fight. I cannot wait to see it. I can't wait to see the betting line when it comes out. I can't wait to see what type of physical changes Amanda Nunes has made in advance of this particular challenge. And for Chris Cyborg, Kenny, this will be the second time in as many years that she will headline that year-end showcase event for the UFC. And I give her a lot of credit for moving the pay-per-view needle and the UFC for having the confidence to give her that opportunity. But there's a lot of talk out there about Cyborg's fighting prime and how during her fighting prime, which she is experiencing right now, she can't fight every three mo months, right? Like she right. is as willing as any champion we have to get back in there on a regular schedule competing three or four times a year. And she cannot do that. From a monetary standpoint, you could argue the best thing for Cyborg would be to lose to Amanda Nunes so she can run it back with yeah. her, right? And ha like, so I know Chris Cyborg moves the needle, but if she wins this fight against Amanda Nunes and it's dominant, a lot of people are going to say the cupboard is bare for Cyborg once again. And, and can we say that this fight is really for legendary status? Because the, uh, yes. the, the woman who wins this fight is going to be the greatest female fighter ever in the UFC. I, I think it's pretty safe to say, based on the skills uh, that they possess and, and the women that they've beaten, um, I think that that's what's on the line even more than, than that belt. Did Donald Cerrone say a statement or, or like state a fact that wasn't true during that whole interview? Well, I don't like that he got Diego Sanchez all upset about the puppy mill thing. You know, Diego went with it. He was like, you know, the wolves are still here, and we got some pups, and we teach them. They're the best amateur program in the world. The thing about the bums coming in off the street, I mean, look, if you got 150 bucks and you want to come in and spar, there's plenty of people on the mat, and it's not like you can just come in and spar Holly Holmes. That mm -hmm. is incorrect because, okay. first of all, Holly Holmes too smart to spar somebody she don't need to spar. She'll call it out from the beginning, like, why is this person in here? I'm not going to hurt this person. Mm -hmm. And then you got coaches watching Holly, watching Holly's back. you got a bunch of fighters watching Holly's back. The Wolves are intelligent because we've been in the game all this time. Sure. We let the bums come in and work with the amateurs because the amateurs should be able to beat up on somebody. A bum that they don't know, that makes it kind of easy to hit them a little harder. 
and then friends that you sparring with every day. You know, sparring is a is a complicated thing. When you're punching your friend in the face, you kind of pull your punch. You got to know how to fucking turn it on and blast somebody when you really have to and need to. And ain't no, there's no reason we should be afraid of some bum. Come in, give us 150 <laughs> bucks for the month. You spar one time, we're going to beat you so bad, you won't fucking come back unless you're really trying to learn. Unless you're really trying to learn. This is not the place. And I can't speak for Jackson Wink. Like, we all know I just got here, and they're choosing me because I'm young. I got a good future ahead of me. They know that I'm a real fighter, a real athlete, and I'm trying to better myself, and I want to give back to the team. I do that with all my interviews. I always show them love, you know what I mean, mad respect to the gym. But, you know, I cannot speak for the gym at whole. I can only speak for Platinum Mike Perry and myself or whatever. So, you know, whatever I say – doesn't go back towards the gym. Whatever's going on between Cowboy and the gym is going on between Cowboy and the gym. But what goes on between me and Cowboy is we got a professional fight. And God bless the dude, but I got to try to rip his fucking head off. Nate Diaz, you see him this week? Oh, fucking transition king right there. You know, flaring up all over the place. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Nate, Nate Diaz, Diaz, Bruce Buffer. Yeah, he's beefing with Bruce. He got, I guess, uh, they had asked Bruce Buffer, um, or no, Bruce Buffer has just chimed in, and uh, Nate Diaz obviously has had his issues with the UFC and Dana White, and you know, Nate plays the Diaz brother role, and he talks shit and blah blah blah. I'm not fighting. I am fighting. Sure, I don't even pay attention anymore at this point. I'm like, that's what they do. They like to make a lot of noise, and I love them. I'm fans of them. But hey, 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 can I? Well, hold on. We'll get to Bruce in a second. All right, no, let, let, let's go with Bruce. I was just going to say, I love the Diaz brothers. Of course, I love to watch them fight. They're awesome fighters. They're a lot of fun. But the tantrums, man, the tantrums yeah. have got to stop. I mean, he's there for his press conference, Nate Diaz, Dustin Poirier. And at the end of it, Dana announces Connor versus Khabib. And Nate swans off, storms out of the building because... It took the shine of his big moment. You know, it's like, come on, you got to deal with it, buddy. Listen, yeah. I'm not knocking Nate Diaz. He's awesome. He, you know, he's a he's a straight up G, bro. But um, that, you know, come on, get a grip. I agree with Bruce. I well, agree with you Bruce know what? Buffett. You know what? You know who doesn't agree with Bruce? You. Bruce doesn't agree with Bruce. Nate Diaz. No, Bruce doesn't agree with Bruce because when pressed on it for a fucking second. No, I know. I know. I know. Bruce I know. He Buffer backtracked. buckled like a bitch. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't buckle like a bitch. Read out Bruce's rebuttal. Here, I got it right here. With all, with all respect, Nate, that is not what I meant by saying the word bow, quote unquote. I meant it as a sign of respect as in when greeting someone, not a sign of submission, as I'd never expect you to do that for anyone at Nate Diaz 209. Yeah, what's that's wrong with that? That's not I that listen. Yeah, of course it is. Listen, <laughs> here's the thing. I'm sorry, but if it wasn't for the UFC, Nate Diaz, we wouldn't be talking about him right now. Of course, right? He made We're a lot of money in those couple of fights. He's made millions of dollars. You know, so maybe Bruce could have chose his words a little differently. Maybe not bow down. But he should have been like, listen, come on, stop playing the victim. You've done very well out of the of UFC. Of course, that's partly, well, not partly, primarily, almost 100% down to Nate Diaz, his fighting ability, his reputation, his attitude that people love. That's why he's a star. But it takes two to tango. You need a promotion. And they gave Nate the Connor fight. He made a ton of money. Now, Nate earned himself that rematch because he beat Connor when he wasn't supposed to. And, but again, he made a ton of money for it. So I think what Bruce was trying to say, listen, stop being the victim all the time. There's no mm. need to be a victim. Yeah, he could have chose his words a little differently. Respect to Nate Diaz for going right back at him. That's what we would expect from Nate Diaz. That's why we love him. But um, as I say, Br Bruce could have worded it a little differently, but I do understand what he's saying. I think Chil Sonnen is the worst trash talker. Chil Sonnen is worse than trash talker. Just because a lot of the stuff he says is gibberish. Just because he says some kind of bullshit. Conor McGregor, when he talks trash, there's a lot of truth behind what he's saying. Conor is usually a real trash talker. 
I think Habib will be under more pressure. Я думаю, Хабиб будет под большим давлением. Just because you know he has a very dangerous fighter who usually backs up what he says. Против Хабиба выйдет опасный боец, который обычно подкрепляет свои слова своими боями. Where Chael is known to talk trash and lose. А Чел говорит и проигрывает. I think uh, I think Fedor wins this fight. Федор выиграет во всех аспектах и в поединке в стойке. On the ground and on the feet, he's just a better fighter. He has great jiu-jitsu. Он просто лучше как боец. Great striking. He's an all-around better fighter. If I were to give Fedor any advice, I would tell him to work on his guillotine because obviously Chael Sonnen is going to shoot and Chael Sonnen always shoots with his head on the same side. So work that guillotine and uh, work your triangles.